part 5 I have left you off with a bug in your script. If you have successfully identified what the bug was then congratulations. But if you haven't then it's ok. We're an, everyone isn't an expert in here so we will start looking at the bug together. My intention of showing you with the error that we th that we have thrown into the script is was that um, I wanted to show you how the system responds when we throw an error in cold fusion. So when we throw an error in cold fusion, the debugging process starts and it shows you where all the uh, mistakes had gone. It shows you explicitly where you have made the mistake. If you read carefully, it says the error occurred in line 12. So where is our line 12 in our script the second last line has an error so what was that error the error had occurred in this from url this from url variable contains the function list get at and i'm also using the list get at function to reference in my cf output tag so this can't be done you can't actually pass the same function inside the function of its own origin so what do we need to do let's just remove this part and we can directly reference the from url variable in our script so this would actually solve the problem because now what we know is that when the user clicks on any link that link contains a query string and it passes a value either one two or three into the script and the script starts processing so it takes the value and stores inside this list get at function and the list get at function retrieves the question that the user wanted and displays it on the page so let's see what happens now let's save this file and let's go back to our page and refresh it so I think you can see it now that our page is running successfully so what if we go on clicking on the third link that we created so I think you can see properly that the page is responding correctly and when you click on the second the second link shows up when you click on the first the first link shows up and what happens if we remove the query string entirely will the default value show up so I think you can see that we have got yet another bug in our system in our code perhaps so where is that bug that we need to change or we need to improve our code so the system is telling us the value what is your name cannot be converted into a number so where is that statement residing it's residing in line 4 and let me tell you although this system this cold fusion debugging process can be very explicit but it can't tell you exactly sometimes so because in this case you can clearly see that the actual error occurred in line 2 the line where we created a parameter but it's telling me that the error occurred in line 4 but the error it has nothing to do with line 4 what it tries to tell you is that because we're passing a numeric value through our query string this gets converted into a number so this number cannot be converted or into a string directly we can't cast off that number like in other programming languages so what we need to do is to change this default value which is a string to a numeric value so because we want to show the first question as the default va as the default question on our page so we want to we want to assign one to our default attribute of this parameter so now let's save it and let's refresh the page so it's working perfectly so the next thing we're going to look at is how we can use looping if you're new to programming then it will be something new to it because it says a lot of code for us because we don't need to go on repeating lines after lines of the same code it saves us from that so we can use looping to do the job for us for the repetition or the iteration part but if you are from a programming background it would be very easy and we can use all the while do while for loops in cold fusion and there is also a loop tag called cf loop which helps us to create and use lists in it to 
uh, output values that we want so let's look at loop into more detail so the first thing that comes up in our mind when we talk about looping is iteration so what is iteration simply suppose you choose to print all the random numbers in the range of 1 to 100 so it would be very tedious and tiring if you go on typing into yourself so why not the program do it for yourself to do that we have to use a loop the loop what it does it checks it has a condition to check that whether it has reached the end of its limit so it goes on printing all the odd numbers from one starting from one and it goes on till hundred when it reaches hundred when it sees that the condition says that you cannot go beyond 100 then it stops and prints all the results on our page there are several ways in writing loops in our call fusion scripts the first way is using the cf loop tag cf loop tag can take up to several attributes and it can be used to link to our lists suppose we create a list of questions and answers and those questions needs to be shown on the page so let's create that script for now so let us choose a new window for this and let us save this as loop1 we'll be creating several other scripts for loop so this would be the first loop script and let's save this and as usual we will start by cf script and end this tag and we were we were introduced about the list previously so we will use that question list and we'll use a corresponding answer list to it so the question list let us copy the question list from our previous script that's done and we need to create another list called answer this answer list will contain all the corresponding answers for our questions so what is your name so this is what is your age suppose we can choose a numeric value for this uh, okay what is your profession let's write programmer that is perfectly alright and because we want the user to interact with our page we need a parameter like before and that parameter will be responsible responsible for taking all the re page requests for our question so this will have the value of URL queue with the default default value of 1 and let's end this now we were talking about loops the first thing that we talked about was using the cf loop tag so how do we use that cf loop tag we need to use that before we use the cf output tag so the cf loop tag looks something like cf loop and you need to end this tag now the cf loop tag can take the attribute of list it is the list or it takes the name of the list that we created we created two lists in here the first list is the question so we will put the question list here because we are going to reference it we need to use our pound symbols so reference that question use pound symbols and this needs to be enclosed inside the double quotation marks and then we also have the index attribute so what does this index index attribute do it takes all those lists and it systematically organizes it so that it prints them out in a list manner so what we are actually doing in here we are taking each of this list and assigning it to a new variable inside this list that we will name as suppose i question i question may mean index question so this index is actually containing a variable that will contain all the values from the list so let us now create the cf output tag and we will be creating a single link now 
The, in the previous script we saw how to create a list this was created by us so in this case we are not going to create or write all those scripts by ourselves this will be done by the program itself we're just going to create a single one so how do we do it first let's start with the anchor tag and let's end this and we will pass a query string inside this href attribute and this query string will have the variable called q which will contain the value not the value that we assign or I mean the numeric value that we assign but it will contain the value from the index that we created in CF loop